subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel 17 and its design has held up very well and many people might want to be updating very soon maybe to the s10 or you might even want to update to maybe this alluring gold iphone 10s this one's a space gray but they have that gold model that might have caught your eye so here we're going to compare these two to see if it's worth the upgrade or should you just stick it out with your Galaxy S8. Let's begin by talking about the bodies and the build of both of these smartphones. All right, guys, so are you upgrading in terms of the build quality? And I think not really. Only in one area I think there's an upgrade to the 10s, and that is the stainless steel. So on the Galaxy S8, you have more aluminum sides over here. You have stainless steel, but on this black one at least, it feels a little polished on the side, so... The feel in the hand is almost identical on both of these smartphones. They're about the same height. The iPhone XS feels a little wider and a little heavier. The Galaxy S8 is like 155 grams. This guy's 177. So if you like that weight and you think it feels more premium, then you'll like the upgrade to the XS. But that light feel, that you know, all screen with no notch in the body here on the Galaxy S8 is just a, still a beautiful design here in 2018. Now on the Galaxy S8, you get more chin. So if you didn't like that chin, you'll like this upgrade over to this design and build on the iPhone XS. Now, Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the rear, and Apple just claims the strongest glass ever on the front and the rear, both these devices. Now, from drop test videos we've seen on YouTube, the Galaxy S8 can shatter quite easily if it just hits one of these edged corners. The iPhone XS is seeming to be pretty strong, so I think the XS, seeing as it doesn't have a curved display, might survive a drop more than maybe the Galaxy S8. So the iPhone XS might be a little bit stronger when it comes to surviving a drop. So the iPhone XS wins in that stainless steel feel, but it loses in this camera design. So you see, there's no camera you can see on the Galaxy S8 because it's flush with the body. But look at this thick camera hump. So right here, I think Samsung gets the win here, even on their older Galaxy S8, because when you have these phones on a table, they do rock on the iPhone XS models. You hear that? Not on the Galaxy S8, it's flush, it doesn't, doesn't rock at all. So that's a design win to the Galaxy S8. Now in terms of the top, you can see there's not a huge difference to be said between both of them. At the bottom though, you do see a headphone jack for that Galaxy S8 where you don't see one for that iPhone XS. So that's a nice thing. And you also have the USB-C universal cable versus the proprietary lightning cable for the iPhone XS. Overall, I find the build of the Galaxy S8 to be pretty close to that of the iPhone XS. So I think coming to this one as an upgrade in build, it's not a big upgrade in terms of the build quality. So let's talk about if you get an upgrade in display from the Galaxy S8 to the iPhone XS. And I think you actually get a downgrade. Super AMOLED displays on both of them. Apple calls their Super Retina. Samsung calls theirs, you know, Super AMOLED. And basically, you know, Samsung makes both of these. So they're both great displays. 16 million colors on both. Both are 5.8 inches. But one has more screen to body ratio. And that is the Galaxy S8. So that means more screen per the body versus the iPhone XS. Even though it would fool you into thinking it has more because it has no chin, it actually has thicker bezels. So that's why the S8 wins there. Now in terms of their resolutions, this is an 1859, this is a 1959. This guy has 570 pixels per inch. That is just crazy for a smartphone. This guy has only 458 in comparison. I say only because that's just a big downgrade in terms of pixels per inch coming from an S8 to an iPhone XS, much less sharp display over here. So I call that one a downgrade. Now, they both have like a really scratch resistant glass, Gorilla Glass 5 over here, and over here, just the strongest glass ever, oleophobic coating on the iPhone, and you do get HDR support on both of these, HDR10 support, so they're pretty much a wash there. The Galaxy S8 has a touch home button on this display, whereas you do get 3D touch across the board here, for the iPhone XS. The iPhone XS offers up True Tone, a wide color gamut display, so it's a very accurate, balanced display. The S8 is more of a vibrant, you know, punchy, just very sharp and beautiful display for like watching videos and stuff like that on your smartphone. So where the iPhone XS will be an upgrade over your S8 would be the 120 hertz sensing rate. So when you are scrolling here, you know, just the response from your thumb is like spot on. It's like perfect here for the iPhone XS. Other than that, I think it's actually a downgrade coming from a Galaxy S8 
to an iPhone XS in the display because you have the video enhancer mode on here. Videos just look better on the Galaxy S8 versus this guy right here, which if you do pinch in, like say you're watching a video here and you pinch in, it cuts into your content, the notch, and it's also not as vibrant and sharp as what you're gonna see on the Galaxy S8, which can give you a 4K status video. Let's go ahead and show you this. So on S8, it's the same thing. You still have to pinch in. It still cuts off content a little, but you can see no cutouts in your content. It's the full video right there. So the Galaxy S8 here is definitely, to me, the better display. And I think if you're thinking about upgrading, you're actually downgrading coming from an S8 to an iPhone XS in the display. The iPhone XS offers a couple upgrades in the 3D touch and you get the 120 Hertz True Tone, but the resolution is what it is and that's a pretty big substantial downgrade from 570 PPI to 458. All right guys, so are you upgrading in terms of software? Well, this is the Android OS on the left with Samsung version 9.0 layered on top. Gives you a lot of nice features like the ability to split the screens and uh, have true multitasking on your device. So we can put settings up here. We can also open up YouTube right here. We can flip them around. We also can have a pop-up view window at the same time. So let's go ahead and open back those tabs we had. And let's go like this. And we're gonna go ahead and open up a pop view window in just a second. So let's pop that one. And you can see you could have three apps running at one time. So the Galaxy S8 can do a lot on the smartphone versus what this phone cannot do, and that is some true multitasking. Also, if you are watching a YouTube video, you have the picture-in-picture -picture mode introduced in Android Oreo. I don't have it turned on, but it'll bring the phone video, whatever you're watching, down to the corner, and you'll be able to watch video while doing other things. Okay, so on iOS, you do have this switcher that goes left to right. Now, I do like this one a little bit better than up and down, but I don't like how you can't multitask with any applications here on the iPhone XS. So it's just a grid of icons. It's the iOS experience of the past and it can be rather boring to some people. It does work very well and it's very smooth. And that's one aspect of the software I do have to say that it beats the Galaxy S8. It's definitely more smooth feeling and the application polish just looks better than over here on the Galaxy S8. But that's not to say the S8 is not smooth. It's a very smooth smartphone as well. And it runs fantastic. It's one of the better Android phones you can buy. But the iPhone XS is just that much better when it comes to just being a lot smoother. And I find that I run into more, I would say hangups on the Galaxy SA. What I mean is like an Apple crash here or there, or it'll just stutter a little bit. It might not crash, but it'll stutter. I run into that stuff just a little more often for the Galaxy S8, but the S8 apps seem to pop open faster with faster animations, but you get a smoother feel for the iPhone XS. So you get iOS 12 here on the iPhone XS, and that's gonna be updated you know, very frequently and up to, it's gonna go up to iOS 13 as well, and you're gonna get many more iOS updates for years to come here. Now, Samsung devices, you're gonna be waiting for quite some time. I'm pretty sure the S8 will receive Android 9 Pie, but first it's gonna to come to their more premium phones like the Note 9 as well as the S9, whereas with the 10s and any other iPhone, you're gonna get that first. So I'm gonna give the iPhone 10s the win here when it comes to software, mostly because with the phone this small, I don't really feel the need to do more than one app at a time because it feels more like a phone. But, you know, it is nice to have that functionality with the SA, but with four gigs of RAM, it doesn't have the power to run it efficiently and smooth all the time with multiple apps in the background. So it does stutter more often. And because of that, I think the 10s is an upgrade when it comes to software, but it wouldn't be so much like versus a S9 Plus, but for this particular phone, I think it is. So is it an upgrade in the camera department? And the answer to that question is yes, because you have another camera, but not only because you have another camera, Apple brings their 10s to the one over 2.55 inch sensor size, which basically matches that of Samsung. And you do get an F1.8 aperture. That is a downgrade from the F1.7, but you have 4K 60 video, which looks, you know, a lot smoother than the video here on the Galaxy S8, which is not bad video. The S8 shoots some fantastic video and photos, and it's still very acceptable for 2018, still very vibrant. But I think the iPhone XS definitely one-ups the Galaxy S8 in the camera department. Now, you have a quad LED flash versus just a regular LED flash here for the Galaxy S8 for just a brighter flash photo if you need that. Now this one shoots in stereo sound here, so for video that's a pretty nice upgrade. And you can do slow-mo at up to 240 frames per second 1080p versus 720 
240 frames per second here, 40s8. So it's got better slow mo video as well. So on the selfie cameras, the Galaxy S8 is going to give you an f1.7 8 megapixel camera, and uh, this guy shoots in up to 1440p on the front video. The iPhone 10s is going to give you 7 megapixel f2.2 camera on the front 32 millimeters versus 25 so it's a little less wide on the front camera so that means it's a little closer to your face you're gonna have to hold the 10s back a little bit more and the camera on the front also utilizes that smart hdr feature for the iphone 10s so it's basically going to take multiple photos before you take the actual photo stitch them together and give you the ultimate result so i think that the camera on the front actually produces better results on the 10s than the Galaxy S8, but these cameras are actually quite comparable. You just get more camera for the 10s. That's why I'm calling it upgrade and better video. So let's go ahead and showcase some photo samples right here. All right, so here is a photo sample of this, you know, street sign, and you could see that the iPhone 10s actually has a more accurate color than the Galaxy S8, where the colors are just a little more yellow, a little bit more, I would say, faker looking than the realistic look of the 10s. So it's a very sharp photo on both. I just find that the iPhone 10s has a more accurate, realistic looking photo. Here we go with that selfie camera. So you can automatically see how the wider lens on the Galaxy S8 brought in more of the houses in the background here versus this one, which cut off the house a little bit first over the S8. So you get a wider angle. So for those group selfies or those photos where you want people in the shot, the S8 actually is a little bit better when it comes to that. But if you look at my face, it looks a little red on the Galaxy S8. This is much more closer to my actual skin tone. This just looks a little pink and red. So I just think the colors look better on the front of the iPhone XS. Now let's go over here to this guy. So this sign is blue, but don't get me wrong. It's not that blue. So like, that's what I'm saying. It's a very saturated, vibrant photo. And if you like that, like if you want your flowers, pictures, and you know, any nature type stuff to look a lot more vibrant, you will like the S8 more. But in terms of accuracy, the 10s is an update in terms of the photos. So let's go over here to this last photo right here. You can see I took a picture of this court sign. It's like a tennis court. And you could see again with the natural colors versus like the darker but more vibrant colors here of the Galaxy S8. So because of the smart HDR feature, the iPhone XS brightens up the photo without you even doing anything. Whereas more oftentimes than not, you're gonna get a darker photo for the Galaxy S8. So yeah, my personal take is you are upgrading from a Galaxy S8 to the iPhone XS when it comes to the camera. Okay guys, so let's talk about the audio quality. Now, I could tell you right now, the S8 has a tinnier, weaker speaker. Look at me cover that up. Easily cover upable. I don't even know if that's a word. I just made it up. Shout out to everybody been following me since the everything tech days when we we changed it to the Nick Ackerman channel. But shout outs to you if you've been here that long. You know who you are. Now on the iPhone 10s here, let's go ahead and play the same thing. Let me turn it up. Let's bring it back. You can still hear volume. So you can see that the iPhone XS, just a much better speaker experience on the external. But when it comes to the audio, not having an audio input jack, you know, if you're old school or you just like this, you know, or you just like having this, or you invested in some headphone jack headphones a long time ago and you don't want to upgrade because you love them, then the iPhone XS is going to disappoint you with no headphone jack. So the audio round definitely goes to the iPhone XS when it comes to external speakers, but it loses a point for not having headphone jack. So are you upgrading when it comes to the battery life? Well, no, you're not really upgrading when it comes to the size of the battery, 3000 milliamp versus 2658 milliamp on the right. And the Galaxy S8 is actually rated at a higher music playback than the iPhone XS. But in the real world experience, I find both these to be great on battery life. I don't think the 10s is going to be a drastic update for you, but I do find it to just last a little bit longer. It lasts closer to like a plus size phone just because it has better optimization than this guy. So the S8 has pretty great battery life for an Android smartphone, but to be quite honest, I'm getting about an hour more out of the charge. But keep in mind, the S8 has fast charging this guy does too but you have to pay extra to get that fast charging so again it's 50 50 you're going to lose that fast charging right away and you're going to have to invest in the charger to get that fast charging 
and you're going to get only a little bit better battery life, like an hour, an hour and a half or so. But to some people, an hour, an hour and a half is not little. But to me, that's little because I charge my phones all the time. But that's not little to some people. So, so I get about four and a half to five hours of screen time for the Galaxy S8. I get about six hours of screen time for the iPhone XS. But I do want to mention that the low power mode does save a lot of battery life. And it seems more effective than the mid power mode on the S8. But it does have a max power mode. And when you put it in max power mode, this phone just keeps lasting on the S8. But I do want to mention one last thing. Standby time is also better for the iPhone XS. Okay guys, so let's discuss biometrics between both of these. With the Galaxy S8, you have face unlock, iris unlock, and fingerprint scanner, plus passcodes, plus patterns to get into your device. So there's multiple ways to unlock this device. You also have a secure folder, has Knox built in, so it's a pretty secure smartphone here. And also Samsung has been pushing more security updates than ever before on their devices. So the S8 is a pretty secure phone with multiple ways to unlock, and the iPhone XS has one way to unlock based Basically, and that is Face ID. So you can see Face ID just works pretty well. Just look at the phone and it opens up. It's a lot more accurate than iPhone 10 I find and it sees me in pretty much any condition, night or day, it has an infrared sensor and it's a little bit more accurate to me than the iris scanner in terms of speed. But both of them do have many ways to unlock. Biometrics round is really going to come down to do you want you know more ways to unlock or do you want a more simplistic way to unlock and that's how i'm going to sum that one up personally i think it's not really an upgrade or a downgrade to the 10s you do get better security but the fingerprint is super secure as well so to me it's more of a sidestep like you're just coming over to this you're not losing much but you're not gaining much either except for authenticating applications like banks and other apps like that okay so discussing gaming let's just open up this really light game jetpack joyride here and talk about it so gaming on both devices is extraordinarily fun but the iphone 10s is just a lot more smooth has more applications they're better optimized and they just pretty much look better in my experience so yes when it comes to gaming you are going to be upgrading coming from a galaxy s8 the games load better and uh they're just they just look like they're better made than on the Galaxy S8. So I think this is one area where you can say, yes, you're going to be upgrading. And that is the gaming department. So that's a nice upgrade from the S8. All right. So which phone is the easier to one handed phone now? OK, so which phone is easier to one hand? Are you upgrading when you come to a 10s to get more of a pocketable device? Now, the 10s is a little wider, but it's shorter than the Galaxy S8, as you can see, just look at the top, it's a little bit shorter than the GS8. But the GS8 has a great feature, which is a gesture feature where you can swipe from the corner to bring down the display. Now, because this display is not only narrow, you can bring it down like this. This is like your whole phone in a 3.5 or a four inch size body here. So this is easy to one hand, the Galaxy S8. The only problem with the S8 I find is the reach all the way up to the top is quite long in comparison to the 10s. So the 10s is harder to reach from the sides, like over to the sides, but not up to the top. So you kind of got to pick and choose, but with reachability, you can reach things pretty easy on the 10s as well. It's pretty close, but because of the one handed full functional mode on the S8, I find this to be a little bit better. Also, if you enable the swipe down notification, you don't even have to go ahead and reach the top to swipe down for your notifications. Also, you can swipe the fingerprint if you can't reach the top of the device, but if you can't reach the top of the device, you probably can't reach the top of the fingerprint either, but you can enable that as well. So there's multiple ways to get around the inconveniences of reaching the top of the display on the S8, whereas there's really only one that works pretty well, but you got to keep doing it over and over again. You can't leave it in this mode for the 10s. So to me, are you upgrading a one handed mode? Not really. OK, so when it comes to the phone call quality, I don't find this to be much of a difference besides the fact you have external speakers. So it's much louder when you talk on a speaker phone. But the Galaxy S8 can attach to a lot of accessories that use that 3.5 millimeter headset jack, which can be found a lot cheaper than Bluetooth handsets most of the time. So the Galaxy S8 to me has a pretty clear call quality. So does the 10s. So I'm pretty much calling them a draw here besides, you know, having a headphone jack again and using your external speakers to talk here. Reception, though, I found to be a little weaker, actually, on the 10s so far, but that could change. I got to use it a little bit more. The Galaxy S8 has held the reception pretty good. So some last things to note that I didn't mention in this video, Bluetooth 5.0 is on both. So they 
Both have very fast Bluetooth connection speeds. The Galaxy S8 offers more color options than the iPhone XS. This one has gold, silver, and space gray. This guy came in midnight black, orchid gray, arctic silver, coral blue, maple gold, rose pink, and burgundy. So this one is just... It's just a ton of colors here. So this one has a ton of colors here as well as the iPhone XS. So this one has a lot more color options that you are just gonna. So coming from this one to this guy, you have less color options. And lastly, the one that pretty much is on everybody's mind, the price between these two. When you bought your Galaxy S8, you likely spent around $800 or so to get it when it was brand new. This guy, you're gonna spend over $1,000 with tax, unless you can find a deal, which is not really easy to find at this current time. So you're paying a couple hundred dollars more to get a phone that actually doesn't beat the S8 in every area, which it should. But should you upgrade from the Galaxy S8 to the iPhone XS? And I think this really comes down to if you wanna make the switch from Android to Apple. If you don't hold off for the Galaxy S10, you'll be a much happier person. But if you're just trying to go to the 10s just because you want a new phone and you're not really considering, you don't really care if it's iOS or Android, what you will get is a much better value when it comes to resale. You can't really get more than like $400 now, and it's only been a year for your Galaxy S8 used, unless you rip somebody off, but I don't recommend doing that because, you know, karma is going to come back to you. But the iPhone 10s here, you saw this thing in a few years, it's still going to get you seven, $800. Also, that seven nanometer a12 bionic chipset is a much longer lasting cpu because it's not built on a 10 nanometer like the 835 and you have software updates that will continue so i think the investment is better served for the long term for the iphone 10s but if you don't absolutely want ios then I think you could stick it out a little bit longer on the S8 and just wait for the S10. It'll be worth it. So that's it. That's the S8 versus the iPhone XS, my full comparison. You've seen that the S8 can really hold its own even though it's going on two years old now. So Samsung built that phone to last. Apple built this phone to last as well. So what are your thoughts on both of these? Drop your comments down below. Do you have an S8? Did you already do this upgrade? Are you planning on do this upgrade? Are you waiting for the S10? Do you not care about 